Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Getting Color right here on TheBigVitoBrand.com. And I am Virtue, being joined by none other than, than the man himself, Big Vito LaGrasso. We are back after a week off. What's up? It's the B.I.G.B. from the L.O.G. coming right back at you for Getting Color. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Get your subscription. Everybody, we got some hot news. David, I know you had to take a week off because, you know, over here at the Big Vito brand, that's what we do. Not like at No DQ where they don't pay for anything. Like, you see the pizza today with his girlfriend. Well, he pays for stuff between them two. That's where all yeah. the money goes. I know, I know. Leave us out in the cold. The men who made Aaron Rift. All right? And I don't know. All right, let's kick off our own show. Well, we got here. a quick shot. And you know, I, I'm not going to try to rush through this, but we want to hit the 30 minute mark because guess what I have in about 45 minutes? A fantasy baseball draft. Yes, I got suckered in to doing it with only a two month season. Baseball's back. It's been going on for a few days. Um, I've already seen a little frustration. I actually did one, one league already where I drafted Thursday night. Justin Verlander drafted him with my second pick. And I get word today that he might miss the rest of the year. He's definitely shut down for two weeks. With a forearm injury, um, so is the life of fantasy sports. Any take on baseball? You want to cut yeah. a promo on me for rushing I, you tonight? No, 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 not at all. Listen, you're a baseball yeah. fan. This is your hobby. It's all great. You know, yeah. the one thing I don't like is them changing the rules of baseball, like putting a runner at second base. I think that's so bullshit. Let them play, boys. Let them play. I think the DH rules gonna is gonna is for this 60 game season. I think it's gonna do fine. Because you can't hurt the pitchers because, you know, they're going to break down from just a short, rapid spring training and trying to go into the season. And everybody, a lot of guys who are pitchers are in contract years, so they're going to try to stretch everything. A lot of them might get hurt. So you're going to see some, uh, you're going to see some numbers. And um, guys, let's pray everything works out. Did you see the big Jets trade? They traded Jamal Adams. Yep. That, now, who do you think got the better deal out of that? The Jets? They got a lot of number one picks. Future they got, stuff. They got two number one picks. They got a they got a cornerback safety in return, and they got uh they got one other pick. Now Jamal Adams is definitely worth two number ones, and they got plus plus. There's no way they were going to pay him 17 million, especially after all the trash talking and everything. And here's my j prediction for Jamal Adams: He is going to flop this year because he talks so much crap. And then he's going to regret it, just like um, uh, the giant wide receiver. What's his name? Beckham. Beckham. And then uh, like, uh, like Bell from Pittsburgh, who came to my Jets. And he didn't do as great as he thought he was. And look at Antonio Brown sitting on the sidelines. So That's crazy. So there, yeah. there goes a lot to say, guys, when you, you chirp and you bark and you bitch and you moan. It never works out for you. Just play to your contract. You'll get your money eventually. By the way, regarding my fantasy league, yeah, I, I drafted Verlander, who I don't know what his status is going to be. But I also got Clayton Kershaw because he went on the DL that night that I did my first draft with back strain, and people were avoiding him, so I snatched him up in the middle rounds, and he's got positive news. It looks like he'll be back as soon as he's available. So you get lucky sometimes, Vito. Do you want to know who you who you should pick from the Mets? Oh, I got DeGrom, by the way. That was my number one pick. Not DeGrom, but I think you should get you should pick up Stroman because he's playing for a contract, and I think you should pick him up. DeGrom is a no-brainer, but DeGrom doesn't produce wins. Stroman is a wins guy. DeGrom is an ace and a half. He don't need to win to beat a Cy Young. But I Stroman's think available in my league. You know he's got a calf injury and he's like week to week right now, don't you? I would, I would, I would take a flyer on him. I might. I was looking at him. So hey, fantasy advice from Big Vito Lagrasso, people. Awesome. Let's talk about wrestling. We got to get wrestling. out of here. We that, go. That's what people tune in to listen to you talk about. So let's kick it off with Mick Foley. Um, he's jumping on this Big E. Let's push Big E. This is something that's been going on for a long time. You know, could Big E be a good single star? And you never know if the, the machine doesn't get behind these people. Thoughts on Big E. Could he be a single star? And thoughts on Mick Foley chirping in like the Internet. I can't stand Mick Foley because he thinks his word is God and what he says goes. Mick, if you watched his last singles run, 
It was a flop. He's a better guy to be a piece to a team. He is a team player. How long has New Day been together? Six years? Oh, it's a long time. I mean, they're going to be like the record tag team holders, but yes, well right. over five. Well, over five, almost six years. And when he was a singles competitor, nothing. The only place Big E could probably go is to Raw to hook up with Bobby Lashley, MVP, Shelton Benjamin, Big E, gives them the four horsemen that they need. A nation of domination type thing. Exactly. That they were rumored. Yeah. And now you heard it here first. I said it. That's where he's going to get his push. It's not as a singles because he's not a singles wrestler. He doesn't have the charisma. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the oomph factor. But put him with a team where he gels. He's your guy. And you know, I, I've always liked Big E, and I want to. It's like I want to argue against you right here. But as you say that, like he's been part of the New Day for so long, like it's hard to bounce, especially since he was singles before then. It's not like he was always a tag team, and like you know, Shawn Michaels became a star later on. So, yeah, it might be hard for him to become a big star at this point. So. If you people remember, he had a run as a champion, right? And after he got beat, he started losing. They took him off TV. They had nothing for him until they started the new day. Go back in history, people. You heard it yep. here first. Stay tuned. All right, now you said you did not see this, but I painted a picture for you. Pat McAfee, a former punter in the NFL, supposedly one of the best punters of all time, Funny, right? Punter has a show, you know, they kind of like an interview show. And Adam Cole, and you know who he is from NXT, was on there and they were doing the back and forth, trying to make it look real. You know how this whole thing goes. And then it got a little heated. Now, look, you know, I always, since Pat McAfee actually was in the WWE and was paid by them for some backstage interview stuff, and like to me, this screams work. The internet wants to cling on to the next CM Punk moment, the next pipe bomb, the next shoot. I just don't buy this stuff. So what's your take on something like this when, to me, it, f it felt I watched it. So giving you that feedback, it, it screams work to me. Now, Guys, if this was like Sam Roberts or so, well, he even, all these, see the thing is, Vito, all these interviewers, podcast guys, radio guys that like wrestling, they're all working for them at some point. So it's like, that's why I think work. What do you, what's your take on this? I think that they're trying to bring news and use former players, NFL players, trying to just generate people to get views. That's all it is. It's nothing serious. It's trying to get views. Listen, the kid just lost the title, right? So why, if he's, why isn't he going to get his title back? Why isn't he concentrating on that? Right away, they put him with an outsider. It's definitely a work, guys. It's just to get the views because they're slacking and they are desperate. Yeah, and they might try to get a couple of non-wrestling fans that might like Pat McAfee in. And, you know, that's the thing. They've always tried to, like, cross-brand and cross-promote outside of wrestling to bring people in. And there's a way to do it. I just don't think they know how to do it properly. You know, um, if they're going to do something, why couldn't you bring somebody like Deion Sanders in? Yeah, big, right? bigger name. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, right, why not go after a Michael Jordan do a basketball segment? Do a football segment. They did Gronk, although he went back to the NFL. Yeah, but you see, but Gronk was a goof, and he made everybody look stupid. That's he true. was a goof, right? Yeah, no bad. But you talk about a Michael Jordan, right, who could be cool. You know, you had Shaquille O'Neal. He was cool. You know, Floyd Mayweather was cool. You know, bring in a guy who would be cool and, cool and you could do stuff with. These guys who are half-assed, a punter, and whatever, just to get a... Uh, oh my God moment. Pat McAfee is no big name. Bring a Deion Sanders in, a Terrell Owens, somebody like that. Yep. Star you power. Know, now, you got, now you got something. I, that's a good point. Now, we've talked about Jericho before, and he's in this current, you know, AEW bubble. Now, to his credit, he's calling himself the demo god because every one of his segments in the demographic range of 18 to 49 has always beat NXT. The fact that he's caught, but you know, I know what he's doing. He's selling merch, right? And he's got the demo guy. He's selling merch to the fans. So smart move on his behalf. But he also recently said he's never going to return to WWE. It's just not for him anymore. Now, with that said, you and I have talked about this. There's still a Hall of Fame induction at some point. So for him to say that now, it's easy. He's in AEW getting paid by Tony Khan. But one day when he's done 
right? And that's all over with. And he's retired, touring with Fozzie in his 50s. You don't think he's going to talk to Vince McMahon or Vince McMahon's not going to have that last, Chris, we got to get you in for the Hall of Fame. And you were saying how they're going to want him back there to WWE to bury him for going to AEW. Is Chris smarter than that? Will he still go back even though he just said he'll never go back? He is going to go back. He's going to get sucked in. He is going to get the, he's going to get crushed. Vince is going to have the less left and then it's going to be on. Look, if they did it to probably one of the greatest wrestlers of our generation, Sting, why wouldn't they do it to Chris Jericho? Kurt Angle as well, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but Kurt Angle had a bad left on bad terms and had a problem, you know, so it wasn't as, as clean cut as Jericho leaving. Jericho wanted to make money. Jericho went on to do his other thing. Wasn't like he left on bad terms. Yeah. But I just, uh, I, I'm telling you guys, it's going to wind up the same way. And you just wait for it. Because, like I said, if they could bury Sting and make him do jobs, and if he didn't get hurt, he was in line to do more jobs, not only for Rollins and Triple H, but whoever else they were going to put in front of him. And, you know, by the way, you know, the Undertaker-Sting match is probably still alive, and they're going to make Sting job to the Undertaker. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, they're not going to let that match happen with Undertaker not winning. And right. Is that going to be a cinematic match, you think, if they do that? Or are they going to wait till they can actually do, do it in front of the fans like in a stadium? Guys, I think that with the both, the, both of them being in – Sting being 60, Undertaker's body is 60 – I think a cinematic match would probably be the best thing for them, and it would probably be halfway decent. So you'll watch. But Sting yeah. is going to do the job. All right. Have you been following this, Naomi? You know, she, she lost on SmackDown, and the Internet's like, you deserve better. You know how the fans go. Yeah. Um, and Booker T started chiming in, hey, you don't, you don't just get a spot because the fans say you do. You still got to earn There's still a protocol and you know that as being a worker. Uh, Booker T's a legend. Been to the top. Been at multiple companies as well. Um, I think finally it settled down in the most recent tweets. It was interaction on Twitter or some social media platform. Naomi looked like she kind of caved, like accepting his, you know, hey, I'd love to listen to you, respect to you, Booker T. But it started off kind of rocky. And I've noticed because, that a lot. With, but David, with this. That's, that's, because, that's because Naomi was plugging her thing saying, give Naomi a chance in a hashtag. Yes. That's how it started. So Booker T being doing the right thing, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, I, got, no. I got hot about it because he was 100% on the money, 100% right. You don't, you don't broadcast your business and beg on. That's like you're begging your boss for a raise. Why would you beg for somebody to book for you when you should go to the office and say, hey, listen, I would like a chance. I would like another run at the title. I would like to have championship matches. But she did it in public. That's poor form. And that's why he got on her. And let's look at some other people that kind of have said some things in public or on Twitter. I think Rusev did something back when they were in Saudi Arabia. And I think he originally got pulled from the match, the casket match against Undertaker. And then they put Jericho in there. And then they, they eventually went back to Rusev, I think. Right. What, like... And look what Rusev, he's gone from the company. So that's, I mean, that, that just kind of proves your point. Like, don't put that out there for the public unless it's something you've talked to management about and you're making an angle out of it, right? Because right. you're disrespecting management. And I don't care. People can say, oh, the management's stupid. They don't know what's good and what's bad. But when you're going publicly telling your company you need to do better with me, now that company's like, you're making me look stupid in front of all these fans. So I kind of agree. I agree with you on this. She should never come out in public and never tweet. Guys, lesson. It's just, all right, we were just talking about this. Jamal Adams of the Jets, probably one of the best talents the Jets have ever drafted. And what did he do wrong? He put it in public and buried the company, buried the coach, buried the general manager. I want, I want, I want. Okay, you got what you wish for. There's a way to do it, guys, and there's a way not to do it. You, want, you have a contract for the next four years. He had two more years and two franchise tags. Jets didn't have to let him do nothing. They could have sat him home, right, 
and then bang him out for 40 grand in fines per day that he missed training camp. So what do you get at the end of the day? It's just like Pres- uh, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott was holding out for an absorbent amount of money. He really didn't come out in, in the press, but everybody did a lot of talking. But Dak Prescott didn't deserve $45 million a year. I don't even think he deserves 25. He has not won anything. It's the, I, what I, have you done for yeah. me lately? Mahomes right now is the only guy in Brady because of their track records. I mean, Mahomes is young, but look, already won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but Tom Brady is – does anybody realize that Tom Brady has been, been underpaid for the last 10 years? And Tom Brady right now is making $25 million, and he owns seven Super Bowls. You mean to tell me that Dak Prescott, because he threw a bunch of yards, okay, with no playoff wins, no Super Bowl rings, no nothing, should get $45 million? Isn't that the same as a guy who was the Tampa Bay quarterback – who Tom Brady just released, who threw for 5,000 yards last year, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. All right, and what did he do? He went to the New Orleans Saints. He took a million-dollar contract. He says, I still have things to learn. Oh, you're talking about Winston? Yeah. Yeah, dude, crazy. All right, so let me me ask you this. In five years from now, is Dak Prescott a starting quarterback in the NFL? You want to know my honest opinion? Yeah. Uh, you know the guy, uh, Cam Newton? Yep. And Cam Newton was so flamboyant, talking shit, doing all this stuff. And remember that one play in the Super Bowl where the ball was in front of him and he chose not to dive on it because he yep. was being a pansy? My Broncos won that Super Bowl. You better believe right. I remember that. Okay. And how has his career gone since then? Look at him. He, he's basically he's they're taking a chance at him in New or in uh, New England. And you know how Belichick goes. You don't just get get it. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. He and he's coming off making decent change, and he I think he got less than seven point five million, and I think it's on incentives. I yeah. think he also signed like a million or two million dollar contract, and everybody's mocking it. But what have you done for me lately? Yep. I agree. Speaking of what have they done lately, some former TNA and WWE stars are back in impact from the Slammiversary, which was a couple weeks ago. So let's go. So you can comment on any of these people. Gallows and Anderson, Keith Slater, Eric Young. I like, I really like Eric Young and EC3. So they really, some of these people take themselves as a big deal with not giving the right opportunity, which goes back to the Naomi thing. What is your take on any of these people now that they're back in impact? Uh, Gallows and Anderson probably can go back to Japan once the COVID thing enters. And they probably figured this is a place where they could shine as a tag team because they really don't have any tag team. Over in AEW, they got 19,000 tag team. So they probably would have got lost in the shuffle. A good point. Keith Slater and EC3. Guys, these guys made comments. You haven't seen the real me. You haven't seen what I could do. You haven't seen what I, or how I could wrestle. Heath Slater, we've been watching you for 10 to 15 years. We've seen everything. How could you tell us that we haven't seen the best of Heath Slater when you just had a career in the WWE? And then EC3, he was Impact Champion, came to the WWE, got nothing. He's going back to Impact. Guys, you are the same worker you are from when you wrestled. You're not going to do anything different. You're not going to change your persona. We already seen you. You're exposed. Your flaws are exposed. Everything we want to know, we already know about you. Are you going to draw an impact? Probably not. But hey, you got a job. Good luck. I hope you make the best of it. And I agree with you on Gallows and Anderson. I could see them just going to impact temporarily and then once things are back to normal, they because they had they were pretty big in Japan with the Bullet Club stuff. And you know how Japan, they always like to have their Westerners over there, especially right. when they're heels. So, yeah, I definitely see that. Uh, and, of course, like I said, Eric Young, he's kind of in the journeyman stages of his career. Uh, I, I do think he was a missed opportunity in WWE, not for a main event, but just something solid on TV. Like you had your solid TV run there. Um, but, you know, he's back where they're going to utilize him. So good for EY. That's really all I got to say about them. Are you ready 
for this main event because this is the stuff that bothers you every week, especially with you being in Florida, the whole COVID, the way people are out and about and the virus is spreading. Nia Jack is coming back? No. No, by the way, somebody said, I don't know if it's true or not, her Twitter is empty now or it's like she just blanked. This will be like a buffer before our main event. Bring up Nia Jax. I, I haven't seen anything from her. Have recently. I called it hook, line, and sinker? Did I book this? How it was yes, going to wind up? She ain't on Twitter. She ain't on TikTok. She got told to shut the fuck up. Okay? You know? And I was going to make a Twitter thing. I'll tell you guys here. It was going to go a little something like this, right? It was going to go, Nia, God damn it. All right? It's snap, pump, twist. Five, six, seven, eight. Snap, pump, twist. Damn! You took out the whole woman's revolution. If that was the TikTok, that should have been trending. Everybody Dude. in the fucking world would be laughing. My wife is cracking up because she goes, you're bad. You're so bad. She, but that's so true. I mean, gosh, if, at her rate of her hurting people, you know, yes, totally but right notice, on that one. You know. But notice she is off TV. She is off the grid. She is off TikTok. She is off Twitter. They told her to shut the fuck up. Yep. Stay tuned because you know when she pops back in the news, we'll be talking about her. All right. So COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Um, we didn't do the show last week, or else we would have already talked about it. But Ric Flair's wife has—I I don't know if she still has it—but in the past two weeks, she said that she had the virus. Now Rick right. has denied it, but like. If we're looking at all the timelines here, the outbreak started at the performance center. Yes. And I don't know if I'm, I'm assuming his wife might travel with Rick to do these shows. If she doesn't, mm-hmm. Rick's there. Rick, I, I feel like Rick's health at his age, and he's had some health issues. This is very alarming. Okay. What is your take on this? And is WWE to blame, or did his wife contract it elsewhere? Now, remember, Rick Flair has denied having it. But again, WWE told anybody they're paying, don't say a word. I want to know your take on this because Ric Flair is involved. It is the big hush, 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 okay? Everybody knows that people contracted a, um, the uh, COVID-19 from the WWE. People have called up. They said they don't want to work in an endangered environment. And, guys, if you think for one second that Ric Flair's wife didn't have it, you're mistaken. She did, right? Well, no, she Just, said she did. He's denying right. he had it. He's saving saving his job, saving face. He even wants to get back in the ring where he doesn't belong. And I like Ric Flair. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I was a fan. I worked with the man. I wrestled against the man. I have no disrespect and no nothing to bad ever to say about him. But he does not belong in the ring with this generation of wrestlers. It is beneath him. And the only reason he is saving face is because his daughter, Charlotte, is off right now. And she is one of the main cogs in the WWE. I think they give him a little leeway. So, guys, I, I just think that, you know, with everything that's happening, you know, could Rick have had it? Absolutely. You know, his, his wife had, you know, Lana's parents, Rusev, Renee Young. You know, I mean, now here's something interesting because you know how pe- they're not allowed to say that they have it. Right. Apollo Cruz was is the U.S. champion and he was working a program with MVP and against MVP's gang. Right. The next thing you know, at the last pay per view, Extreme Rules, he was out. Interesting, right there. Do you think Apollo Cruz is one of the positive tests? It has to be because I don't think he sustained an injury. He was actually working healthy. Right. Guys, you're seeing it. And also, you're seeing the ratings get lower and lower and lower. What does that tell you? Bruce Pritchard, one of the one of the fabulous heads of the five families who bury Russo, is on the chopping block, and they're, they're only going to get so low, people. And then when all the Russo haters and all the people who shit on Russo, and you know Russo's booking and Russo this, well, you're all struck out, guys, because the product is shit. Thanks to you, and he's still going to bury Russo. I mean, now you know Russo. He he ain't going back unless he can work from Skype at home. So right. when Pritchard is gone, because you know McMahon likes to have the scapegoat, even though everything goes through McMahon, he doesn't want 
even though you people like you, right, Vince Russo, no, it's it's Vince's fault why everything's so shitty. Right. But Vince always likes to have that yes man scapegoat that he can put the blame on when Pritchard's gone because Bischoff is gone, Heyman is gone, Pritchard's next. Who's the next fall guy that they're going to put in place? Because Vince yeah. has to have somebody because he always has. Michael Hayes is gone. Uh, who else? Road uh, Dog well, might still be lurking. I don't know. He might be down in NXT. Sean and Triple H are down in NXT. I don't know who they're going to put as the next writer or creative lead. Guys, it's slim pick. there's only one guy they haven't gone to, and that's Vince Russo. And if Vince Russo comes back, I am staking my reputation as a wrestling analyst and journalist that the ra- that the ratings will go up over two million once again. Three, I I, I say three. I, I mean, you know, if it was during the pandemic, it might be a little slow go. But dude, now is there any there's anybody else besides Russo that like? What about a Kevin Sullivan? Is there anybody that we forgot that has been in charge of booking before that Vince could bring in to be as the next scapegoat? Keep in mind, some of these people might be too smart to get put in that position, but it's always about collecting a check because Heyman did it. Guys, let me tell you something. The, the old guard is, is, is out, and there is no more old guard. There's one guy left. I mean, if you're talking about, like you said, Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan, I, I mean, I love Kevin Sullivan, and you know his way of booking and his psychology doesn't mesh with Vince McMahon. It just doesn't. And, you know, when you talk about meshing and working and doing stuff, the old guard has a certain way of doing things. Vince doesn't want to bend his rules. Vince wants what he wants. But in this scenario, if Vince Russo did come back, he's going to pay him a shit ton of money. He's going to be Vince Russo's way. And Vince McMahon is going to have to eat it. So, guys, you heard it here, getting color with no DQ, David Stallworth. I'm telling you, this is the way it's rolling. Dude, and you notice you never hear about, but ultimately, since like I would say the early 2000s, she's been in the creative bubble. Stephanie, she gets like no mention from any of it's. It's like she's like got a role, but she, she never gets heat on her for any of this. Isn't that, I'm just saying, isn't that interesting? You know she's still got, getting a paycheck. She's got that's, some role within the company. That's because she did used to get involved with the booking. And she did take a lot of heat for a lot of stuff. I think she's involved with the women's division. And I think that's where her niche is going to be. She's not going to overexpose herself as a McMahon and get buried by the media. That's why she's keeping a very low profile. Now, as we'll close the show, I just have to bring this up because you mentioned women's division. You mentioned Stephanie. Remember that pay-per-view they had called Evolution? I remember all of that happened, but you know who was involved when all of this happened? Yes, they still had Becky, Charlotte was there, but they had one Ronda Rousey. Is uh, On the No DQ review last week, we talked about when like Brock would come back, Roman, and you and I have talked about this, Charlotte. Is Rousey ever going to come back into the business here? Um, WWE should pay her a lot of money. I'm not saying she moved the needle, but I mean, they're desperate. Guys, with no crowd, there's no reaction for Rousey. And she was a big crowd noise needle mover. Without the, without, the, without the crowd, I don't think she has the experience to handle a silent crowd. She doesn't have the work pedigree. Not to say she's a horrible worker. I just said she doesn't have the experience to handle something like that. What if we get back to crowds one day, though? Is that a possibility with her? Yes, 100%. Okay. I can see her coming back. And she had a big run there, so, you know, never, I, never I, say I, never in wrestling, right? I thought she was awesome. I think she did a great job. I really Yeah, did. it made it interesting. I definitely enjoyed her. We're at the 30-minute mark, Vito. Anything you want to say in closing? No, nah, guys, just keep up with uh, with um, getting color. Thank you very much for, for uh, being behind the Big Vito brand. Um, if you guys could subscribe to our network, the Big Beetle brand, and go on there on Twitch and subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. You know, as always, um, you know, David and I do put forth a good product. We're proud of what we do. It's a no bullshit group. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But, you know, like I said, we're not trying to get a job. We're not trying to do anything here but give you good uh, journalism, our, our honest opinions, and our experience, you know, from the wrestling business. 
I hope you guys are enjoying the show. I mean, David and I do enjoy this, and we do make a good team. David, go ahead, close it out. You can follow Vito on Twitter at the Big Vito Brand. Go over to thebigvitobrand.com. And also, I'm going to have a new Virtues brand of wrestling up early this week. Um, hopefully, we'll get Robbie Vice back on. And you can follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtues. So it's been a blast doing this video. Thank you, Vito. We got right to the point today on these topics. And you know what, people? We will be back next time. So thanks for what. Anything else? It looks like you got a big thing to close the show with. Hey, Aaron Rip, we're still waiting for that. You know, don't, don't make, don't mock us. Don't mock us, Rip. All right, we're watching you and how much you're in love and watching the daffodils grow, making me sick. Just sick. Aaron Rift, we'll see you next time. Enjoy your pizza. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>